Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another wonderful Surefire Local webinar for you here today. My name is Patrick. I am your host as well as your speaker for today's session, the Online Presence Spring Cleaning Checklist. All right, everyone, welcome back. Why don't we get into some housekeeping items like we'd like to go over before we get started, just in case anyone out there is unfamiliar with Surefire Local. Our mission here is to help you make online marketing easy by providing your business with a next generation platform that is available everywhere you need it across multiple devices and browsers. We provide the software that you need to attract customers and grow profits efficiently and all from one place. Today, we are coming to you again live. That's right, live. Later on today, you will receive a link to this recording as well as all of the presentation slides via email. So there is just no need to worry about taking notes and taking it all in, especially today. We have a lot of details to get over, uh, to go over a lot of checklists and checkpoints for you and your team to review later on. Uh, the idea is that this would be a uh, checklist is something you can keep in frame of reference for later on for you and your team to go over your marketing, whether it be now or a later point in the year or what, but uh, we'll get into that. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. But the uh, the entire purpose of today's presentation especially is that it would be a guide. You are going to get the slides and you will receive a link to this recording as well. So there's no need to worry. We're glad you took time out of your day to spend it with us. And so you can just sit back, relax, and just take it all in while you are here. Just in case, if you do not mind, please check your spam folders to make sure that uh, Anything from Surefire Local is not in there. So just do a double check. You can also share feedback with us at any time by emailing us. Our email is marketing at surefirelocal.com if you have any questions or if you just wanna say hi. And if you have any questions today as you're listening with us, you can very easily submit those to us via the questions tab from the GoToWebinar control panel. So feel free to send those over as well for future reference. And as always, please look at the resources page on our website. We have the link right there, surefirelocal.com forward slash resources. Please, please check out that page on our website. We have a great back catalog of previous webinars, eBooks, and all sorts of free resources and tools that are available to you, again, free and on demand. So please, Go check that out. We have a wonderful back catalog of all of our webinars. So why don't we go ahead and get started on today. We have a lot of great details that I need to go over. We're going to break up today's session into three parts when talking about the on, your online presence. First, we're going to go over establish. This is where we're going to review on what exactly an online presence is, what it's made of and how it determines your visibility across Google search and maps. So a bit of a refresher course, lots of details in there. Um, and then we will move on to refresh. Now this will be your spring cleaning checklist. These are the five ways that we talked about when we were promoting the webinar. This is what you can do to maintain, refresh and clean your presence. Um, you, this is stuff you can do right now. You should be doing at least once a year or you can do it multiple times a year. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be in spring and sort of helps if it is, it's a fresh new start and everything, but uh, refresh is all the steps you can take uh, to uh, maintain and clean your online presence. And then lastly, with grow, we are going to leave you with the strategies that you're going to need to uh, discuss and review with your team to strengthen your online presence and dominate your local search results well into the future. So it's all about what is, what is your online presence, uh, how it impacts you and your business, and uh, what factors play into uh, promoting your business online and strengthening your online presence. Refresh what you can do right now to clean and maintain and make sure it's working as as best as is possible for you and your business, and then grow the strategies you can put in place 
for the future so that it can um, you know maintain and help your business grow uh, on into perpetuity okay let's get into that let's start with establish here we're going to be going over what is your online presence what is it made of and of course how it determines your how your online presence determines your online visibility so a bit of a refresher course lots of points um in here and especially today this is one of our checklist webinars as i like to call them so lots of the individual things that we'll be going over i'll let you know when where um we have discussed them in the past and there are uh, more in-depth webinars you can go through for each individual topic individual topic let's say that pronounce that distinctly my apologies all right so let's get in the nitty-gritty what is your online presence First, there's you, the actions you take and the content that you create. What are you sharing with your community and with your prospects that pertains to your business? What are you putting out there into the world? Then, of course, the internet, the all-seeing algorithm and how it takes, how well that content is uh, distributed and optimized for your online presence and how, with regards to the, the internet takes it, regards to the search engines and social media algorithms to disperse it out disperse disperse that content out into the world and to your thir third and lastly the public how your community is digesting seeing and perceiving this content and what that says about you your business your brand and how the public and your community engages with you excuse me okay let's get in over there if i can just find hey there you are little mouse okay so what starts with the journey well it starts with local search uh more often than not uh this is how many of our interactions online in our daily lives start this is just going in and typing uh, into the search engine as we all know the traditional way uh the simple way the most clear and cut dry this is the starting point in your customer's quest for products and services nearby so this is just this is the uh hvac repair near me roofer near me, uh, lawyers in my area, dentists with uh, a dentist in uh, insert zip code here, et cetera, et cetera. This is where it all starts. Uh, your presence online is broken down into essentially five pillars, how Google is, uh, is reading you. As a business, there are five online visibility pillars that you can, you can incorporate into your digital footprint to increase the chances of getting found and becoming more accessible on Google search and maps, being Google the most important, of course, the all seeing eye, so to speak. Uh, there are five pillars here. There's recency, there's how often are you uh, promoting content online, uh, how regularly, and uh, whether or not you are posting new content online are you keeping it up to date are you keeping it fresh are you going in and removing outdated materials we'll get into more specifics later on distance um, where are you in relation to someone's search does google know your service uh, does google know your service area that the person is searching from so how uh, plugged in are you do you have the zip codes implanted into your google business profile we'll go over that do you have local schema is your website uh, appropriately configured to uh, take in all of your service area we'll get into the details on that but how well everything is configured for distance availability how consistent you are with all of your information online how consistent you are with your business hours say on your google business profile and and are you online and is your business active during the times that people are searching throughout the day we have a star there for relevance okay so is what you're creating valuable and useful does it provide answers to questions of people are searching for relevance uh, we have that little star there is to designate its importance so that is what i like to th how i like to think of that is that's the genuine conversation that's the human element that's you going back and forth and discussing with your community so how relevant are you to your uh your industry your business your area your prospects the platforms they're on uh, the questions that they are asking and uh, how how genuine is that back and forth and that conversation and how much content are you producing to uh, 
to reach out and to address the specific issues of your customers and your area. So that's what are you putting out there and how relevant it is for your community. Prominence, um, you see there, do others link to your website? So that is where things like backlinks come into play. That is where, uh, you know, do you say have a wonderful video on proper maintenance of, uh, you know, either the gutters of your house or, um, you know, if you have a home services business and you sort of uh, have a frequently asked question, you know, uh, so anyway, do you have a piece of content or a YouTube video, for example, out there in the world with important information and are people linking to you? Are people sharing your content within the community? That's where that would come into play. But those are your five areas that make up your relevancy on Google. So we have a lot of stuff to get into. Uh, I will try to uh, breeze through this as efficiently as possible because there are a lot of fantastic points. Uh, this is, for instance, we have webinars all about being found on Google Search and Maps. I encourage you all to go back through our resources page to check this out if you have any questions about any one particular topic. But the first thing you can do is making sure that you have uh, your business is appropriately listed in all the business uh, listings, especially Google business profiles being the most important. That's the first thing we tell people to do. So when people are on the go or not near a computer, how are we most likely searching folks? We're not you know, waiting to get home to pull up our uh, uh, personal computer to type into Google you know, the searches we want to find. No, we're out on the go, we're living our lives, we pull a little rectangle out of our pocket, we pull Google Maps and we go, uh, you know, um, dentist near me, roofing company near me, uh, everything, you know, uh, what did I say, insert zip code here. So that's, that's how they're doing it. So if you do not have your Google business profile uh, set up appropriately and it's, the information is not consistent, and that's not the first thing you do, they're not gonna find you, but that's not the only one. We also have the example there, Apple Maps. Apple Maps, instead of pulling from your Google business profile, Apple Maps has their own service, and of course it proves from Yelp. So are, is your information consistent on all the various platforms? Because Google Maps not being the only one, that's important because leading into voice search. Depending on the type of voice search system being used, whether it be Apple Siri, or uh, Microsoft Cortana. Uh, I know maybe a little bit the not the the least popular one. Sort of, I think I'd probably insert that under Alexa. But uh, and then especially even if you're just typing, if you are typing in the Siri, uh, Siri is not going to say, for example, pull from Google. Okay, uh, Google uh, Siri is going to pull from Apple Maps. Apple Maps is going to uh, pull then again from what business profile? Yelp. So you, if you want to be found and make sure that you are covered on all the different forms of voice search, whether it be Siri, Alexa, Google, et cetera, then you need to make sure your business is listed on all these various platforms. Uh, questions and recommendations drive engagement. Uh, one thing very important to note about voice search, voice search returns one result. Okay, so the, the whole point is that it is expedient and efficient and convenient for the users. So people say, hey Siri, find me blank. It's only gonna show one, not the second or third one down like you can on a more traditional uh, search when you just type it into Google Maps yourself. So it's important to note and to make sure that you are up to date on all those various listings uh, so that you can show up on this new world of voice search. We also have wonderful webinars about this, this topic just on its own as well. Is a mix of discovery search, who is the top rated HVAC contractor and direct search, uh, you know, the the name of the business, your uh, your industry, etc. What else can play into your algorithm and how people are finding you online? Um, I think it's a, a bit of a myth that younger generation, that it's just younger generations that are drawn to imagery or video or quote unquote visual, visual search in interacting online. Uh, I think you will find that most people 
uh, are visually minded. Uh, it is this aspect, your eye-catching photos and videos that uh, it should be no surprise are going to attract uh, the, uh, the largest number of followers when viewing your content. Visual content plays a major role in your customer's journey. So your customers will first look at photos and videos that answer their questions and solve their problems. And then they might then, and only then, might they see something you've written. So think about the type of content that you're putting out there in the world. Are you um, putting out images on your Google business profile that exemplify your business and the type of quality work that you do? Are you adding uh, videos to your uh, social platforms that uh, maybe cover best practices or uh, frequently asked questions or how to type video. Uh, that's the type of goodwill that you're putting out into the world uh, that people are going to respond to. But most importantly, it's, inter it's something interactive and it's personal and then get a real view of you and your work. So that's your images and your, your videos that you're putting out there. Make sure that you're putting uh, you're having an emphasis not just on the written word, on your blogs, but as well as your interactive content. So your visual search. Moving on, we are to referrals and social media. So this is the new age um, word of mouth. This is the, I like to see this, think of this as a bit of the relevance uh, portion that we talked about earlier, this is your genuine back and forth conversation and connection with your community. Social media and referrals is where you can really reach out and, and be genuine and have a real back and forth with uh, your customers and your community. People use social platforms to ask for recommendations and referrals from fr uh, friends, family, and neighbors, okay? Not only do we have Facebook there, but we have Nextdoor. You see that? So it's not just your, you maybe your friends and family community, but it's people in your neighborhood. People compare your business against others, check if your business, one, has a presence on social, and two, if your business is actively engaged. Are you on the platforms they're using, and are you staying relevant and staying up to date and adding new and fresh content and managing and getting rid of the old content, okay? So that's part of what we're here to do today. The spring cleaning, get in there, see what we need to update and see what we need to take out. People seek out relationships with your business and their community, a sense of belonging. So this is where you, uh, this is your chance to truly connect. You can respond to their questions. You can respond to their comments. Uh, we, we have a great point down there. I wanna make sure to read. Sometimes your social profile serve as your first impression with a new customer. If you haven't posted on Facebook in seven months, what are they gonna think about your business? So, you know, have you taken out your old content and have you added new? This is where you have, this is where you can start your real, genuine, true conversation with your prospects, excuse me, again, in your community. All right, um, this is, uh, I, I kind of think of this as a little bit of the no-brainer slide. Customer expectations have accelerated the need of having an established online presence. Um, we're, you know, uh, we're at the year 2023. Uh, it almost, you know, if we were alive in the 90s, that would sound like a bad sci-fi movie in the year 2023, but it's real and um, the internet is how we live our lives, your online presence. So it's it's no surprise that you need to have one. Um, you're wondering, why do I need to do this? Uh, well, it's a necessity. It's It's no different than, you know, paying your taxes and your employees and taking care of your customers. You have to have an online presence. Is your business easy to find online? Does your content provide value? And do you make it easy for new customers to contact and message you? Can they find you? Do they like what you have to say? And can they talk to you? And do you talk to them back? All right, so the most basic stuff, you could almost put this at the very beginning um, because if you're not, this is the first question you should really ask yourself. Um, because if you, if your answer to these are no, then you uh, probably should call us right away. You have a lot of work to do. Uh, but more often than not, you have some components and not others. And more likely, you have a lot of different systems and they aren't talking to each other. Benefits of having an online presence. Uh, again, a little bit of a no-brainer. You actually want to be found online. It, 
legitimizes your business. You promote the hours of 24 seven of when you are available. Okay, you know, um, you want to be open when people are looking for you, but they, you know, they could also be searching for your business at four in the morning when they can't sleep. Save money while attracting new customers. You earn the trust of the all seeing eye, Google, and you nurture customer relationships, that genuine conversation I was talking about. All right, so it should come as no surprise you need an online presence. But in case you are asking your questions, why should I care? Um, this is just a reminder that uh, you need to get on that. Refresh. All right, so let's get into what we promised you here today, the steps you can take to maintain and refresh your presence. Why is it important to do the, do so? How can you apply spring cleaning to your business? So uh, how, what are the steps? Another way you can look at refresh is I like to call this the maintain portion of our webinar. Refresh can also be seen maintain. It does not something you just have to do in spring. You can if you like, but it's something that I think you should take these steps right here. When you're going back and reviewing, come to this middle portion any point in the year when you think you want to take another look at your online presence and give it a nice uh, cleaning, think of it as maintenance. So these are the steps you need to take uh, to refresh that presence for your business. Let's get into it. Uh, just a little reminder, why is spring cleaning in important in general, whether it be in your online presence at your business or just cleaning up the closets in your house? What does it do? It refocuses your goals, it refreshes your brand, it refreshes your state of mind, it removes distractions and clutter, and it improves your mental health. I mean, we're all aware of that uh, was a show on Netflix where the uh, the expert asks, does something spark joy? Well, you can you take the same philosophy to your online presence and look at something and say, is this relevant? Is this up to date? And does this communicate what we want? with our brand and with our community. Here are the five portions of the checklist, the five areas you need to go through that we promised you when we were advertising today's webinar. But this is, uh, you can come back here, you could, you could um, when I get the slides, you can pull this out and you could take this page, slide 17, you can print it out and you can put it up on your cork board for you and your marketing team to look over. Here's the five areas that when you're going through and you're doing a refresh maintain, you need to make sure that you look at your business listings, primarily your Google business profile, but it's, um, it's uh, Google business profile is a listing and most important, that's number three, but uh, there are plenty of other ones as well. Refresh your brand image. Of course, just said that Google business profile, the first thing we tell clients to do, the first thing anyone should do if you're listening to this if you're just getting started with online marketing maybe you just opened your business or maybe uh you need to expand um the very first thing we tell everybody to do is go get your google business profile it's free we're going to be talking about it quite a bit here today and we have many webinars that are dedicated just to that it was formerly known as google my business um, it, the Google business profile, probably the most important thing you can do, we'll get into that. Number four, diversify your ads budget. That is the nitty, the real technical aspect of all of this, of your marketing. Um, we will get into ads and then five, clean up your digital workspace. Okay, so these are the five steps you need to do to refresh, maintain your presence. Let's get into them with number one, business listings. Keep your online presence clear of clutter and dust by managing your business information across all sites and platforms. What's the most important thing? The more complete and accurate all of your information is out there of your business, the more credibility Google and others have in ranking your, ranking your business highly in search. So what, what do we really have to focus here? Think about consistency and accuracy. So is all your information readily available and is it accurate across all the platforms, whether it be you, uh, what did we say, Yoop? Yoop doesn't exist, Yelp does though. Yelp exists and has been around for a long time. So let's say you have, uh, let's just take for example, Yelp and Google Business Profile, there are many other ones. There's, uh, uh, it could be a local one, it could, you know, uh, whether, or, Google Business Profile. Anyway, the important thing to remember, uh, folks, what I'm trying to say 
is make sure that your business name, your phone number, your address, your description, category, all your information, et cetera, is consistent in the same on all platforms. All your hours of operation are the same. The spelling of your company is the same. Okay, don't have Claire and Dawn's Beach Shack versus, you know, with uh, the ampersand versus Claire and Dawn. Keep it what, however you want to spell it. Just make sure that it's consistent and the same across all listings. Little things like your phone number, notice the periods there versus the uh, parentheses and the dash. Little things like, it's the little details like that that are gonna be important. Make sure this stuff is the same. Your name, your hours, your details, the way it's formatted. It doesn't matter if it's Google Business or Yelp or whatever, make sure it's the same. Refresh your brand, uh, relevancy, we talked about that. Post photos and videos to your website directories, Google business, social platforms. You have a piece of content, I don't care what it is, you put out a video on your YouTube. You published a blog to, you published a new post to your blog on your website. You uh, have a new promotion you wanna put on your Google business, your Google business profile. Make sure that you are posting this stuff to all your channels. So just because it is a blog on your website, don't think that it just sits there, okay? You can take that link from the blog on your website. I know it seems rudimentary, but if you're not doing this, it has a massive impact. Um, it can have a very large impact on your accessibility online. So you have that blog post, you want people to know about it, Take that link and put it on your Facebook. Take that link and put it on your Google business. Take that link and put it on whatever social platforms, your, your next door listing, whatever. You can post the same new content to everything. That YouTube video, that, isn't just, that does not just exist on YouTube. That YouTube link can be put on your Google, on your Google business profile, on your Facebook, et cetera. Make sure you have a new piece of content that you are sharing it everywhere update your business description of business listings. We talked about that. That goes back into being consistent to make sure that everything is not just consistent, but up to date. You change your business hours. You change your business hours on every one of your business listings. Update and stay consistent. Update your cover photos on social media profiles. So make sure you have the same logo on everything, but as well is uh, make sure that you are updating new content. You have a great new photo of some client work that you've done that you want to showcase. Make sure that is everywhere your customers are as well. Update your pinned post on social media platforms. You have new stuff out there. Uh, essentially, you know, stay relevant, uh, stay new, and get rid of what is outdated. Google Business Profile. Again, uh, the most Number one thing we tell people to do. I've already said that. Um, what are some other aspects of the Google Business Profile I haven't covered? Well, I haven't covered the fact that you uh, you can add, I, th I think it's in a later slide here, we're gonna find out, it's 20 zip codes. You can add your entire service area to your Google Business Profile. That has a massive impact on when people search with the near me um, into their Google Maps. You can publish posts. Uh, it is also a social platform. So just as if you, like I said, you're that blog post that goes from your, you, you made on your website, you promoted it, you sent an email out, tell people about the new video you made, then you put it on your Facebook. You also put it on Google Business Profile. You ask for reviews. We will get into reviews later. Uh, I don't wanna get too ahead of myself like I've already done, uh, but Google reviews are, extremely important and you can ask people to participate into that. We have entire webinars and tons of uh, blogs and materials available on our site just about the importance of reviews and we will talk about them later on here. Uh, post a question of your own or answer one asked by a customer. Google Business Profile is a great place for your FAQs, your frequently asked questions and answers. It's all about being more efficient and, conversation, and, and conversational with your customers, getting them the stuff that they need as efficiently as possible. Upload, upload new photos and videos, uh, remove any outdated ones, stay relevant, and take out the stuff that is not relevant anymore. 
very simple. You know, don't go seven months, don't go several months without posting something. Make sure your content is up to date. And if something is just too old, get rid of it. Diversify your ads budget. We will talk about ads later on. Get started with local services ads, just in case anyone is unfamiliar with local services ads. I'm gonna read this little thing here. Uh, local services ads help you connect with people who search on Google for the services you offer. Okay, so your ads show up for customers in your area. And the good thing about a Google service ad or a Google LSA ad is you're paying for an ad that's going to show up for customers in your defined service area. And you're only going to pay if somebody clicks on that ad and they contact you directly through the ad. So as opposed to a traditional cost per lead where you're paying for each click, in a local service ad, you're only paying for the lead when somebody clicks on that link and asks to contact you when you get a when you get a true conversion from that ad. So that's a wonderful, uh, we can help you at Surefire Local with your Google LSAs, depending on your um, your industry and your market and uh, and your location. Uh, they can get uh, they can get pretty specific, but the great thing about them is you're only paying for people that have asked to talk to you. Add a new Google Ads campaign to your portfolio. You can really get into the weeds here with with uh, with online ads, but especially Google Ads. And it's, and it's not just them. Um, we are going to talk later on about Facebook and how massive that is. Uh, some of you may have found us today because of one of our Facebook ads, but they're also not the only one. You have, you have Instagram and you have Microsoft, the Bing ads as well. There is a massive world out there for online ads. So make sure another great way to uh, refresh and maintain your online presence, set aside some cash, to find somebody to help you with your ads. Clean up your digital workplace. Get rid of Excel spreadsheets and cluttered file, man, uh, file managers. Folks, if you are still existing in a world where only one person in your business has all the quote unquote marketing stuff on their computer, if you're constantly asking some individuals for that one particular PDF that just keeps getting emailed back and forth between 30 different people, if no one can find that one link to that great video or that one great case study, then maybe you need to look into some marketing software to automate your report, your, to automate not just your reporting, but to organize your digital assets and your access to those digital assets. Maybe it's time to look into some uh, some a cloud-based system or an automated marketing platform because it is we are well past the point where everything should just be broken up into a well I have a you know I have several folders on a desktop that sits in the back office on an old computer that's 10 years old and we we put Photoshop on there and it one runs really slow so you know if you if you need that PDF you'll have to go to the don't do that you, you we're we're well past the point where this stuff should be readily accessible on a digital platform for you and everyone in your team use an all-in-one platform to bring everything into one place reviews management social media posting content writing website analytics email marketing text messaging google business profile updates your paid ads quote unquote your swish wish uh, Google LSA, Swish Wish, and more. Okay, so start to think about automation and start to think about software um, and platforms that can help you. Grow. Moving light right along. Uh, thank you, everyone, staying with us today. We are going to get into the last portion of today's webinar, but you'll see that this is uh, probably the more detailed one. So these are the strategies that you can put in place to strengthen your online presence to reach more new customers through Google search and maps. So we've, we've gone through what is the online presence and why it's important, you know, the, the basics, the foundations. We looked at your refresh, we looked at how to maintain, you know, what you can do at any point throughout the year, multiple times throughout the year preferred, 
to maintain and, and, and polish your online presence. And then lastly, in Grow, we're gonna look at the foundations and the strategies that you need to put in place to keep your business um, humming right along, keep your online presence humming right along into the future so that when it does come time to do your refresh, it is a much simpler and easier stress-free process um, on you and your team. All right, for Grow, that's right. We have 14 different areas to go through. So this is another one maybe that you can, uh, when you get the slides later on via email or you're watching the link to the recording later on, which you also get via email, you can uh, go back through your 14 strategies, not unlike your checklist and make sure that you're hitting all of these points. You'll notice here that we have already talked about quite a bit of these. And as, as I've already said before, on our resources page, we have a vast library of webinars that cover each individual one of these 14 uh, areas. So I highly suggest you go and check that out. It's not just webinars, it is eBooks and it is blogs as well. You can get very detailed into these, but I am going to, as efficiently as I can, go through all 14. And what I love about this, is for each one, we've labeled it, and um, uh, my colleague here has put uh, these wonderful little markers that tell you, this is how, this is sort of the level of difficulty in terms of the challenge of, when you think of difficulty here, think of uh, how much time and resources it's gonna take for you to just make the thing, and then the uh, technical aspects of it, how complicated it could be to maintain, and then the more important one is, depending on the difficulty, the impact it's going to have on your uh, online presence, that be whether good or bad, okay? That's it, impact, the higher the impact, uh, the more you can, the uh, more relevance it has on improving your online presence, higher the impact means if you are not maintaining that, if you are not looking at that strategy, then the more it's going to impact your online presence negatively. Okay, but let's look at the content that you create. So this is, uh, I think back about um, relevance really, uh, like we looked at the pillars of visibility before, um, content has a lot to do with the conversation I talked about having, that relevant conversation that you're having with your community as well as your prospects. Uh, so the more conversational, the better. The more one-on-one, -on -one, the better. Focus on relevancy. Talked about it time and time again today. You need to have a strong understanding of who your customer is. So what do they need to know? What are their frequently asked questions? What are their problems? If you have a home services business, do you have those how-to videos? Those are fantastic because somebody's going to, you know, go into YouTube. They're going to search, and they're 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 going to find you, and they're or they're going to uh, uh, subscribe to you or follow you through Facebook, and they're going to see you post about your how-to video, and they're going to know it's like I'm glad that that company is going out of its way to share educational content because that's a five-minute fix that I can do on my own and I don't have to call them and I don't have to bother anybody and I don't have to spend any money and so the next time something really bad does happen they're going to remember that local business that gave them that how-to video so this is your point to reach out and be genuine with your prospects and this is how you start your connection and your conversation with your community structure and reliability is key Content, uh, create content at all stages of the customer journey, awareness, consideration, decision, purchase, and referral. So it just doesn't, it just doesn't end to get the lead. We're talking about all the different, all content for all the different stages um, of your customers, getting them in the door. What do you need to build trust to get them in the door to make them a customer? What do you need to provide them to keep them up to date on their day-to-day -day lives as customers? Um, and then, uh, you know, what are you doing after the fact to maintain those relationships that you have a long-term customer? Different people respond better to different types of content. So we talked about, you know, if it's worth a blog, write a blog. But, you know, 
that's where we talked about the videos and the visual content make sure that that stuff is striking it's easy you know you can make a connection easily by just pulling out uh the phone in your pocket and snapping a uh, high def iphone image or video if you want to do that but also think about the fact that it is still worth the even with these devices in our hands available it is always still worth the money if you have it to put in your budget to have a professional videographer come out uh maybe somebody with a, a local area that has drones that can come out that can help you do you know uh, you know overhead shots of your business location etc it it is worth the money to pay for something like a professional photographer is what i'm trying to say 46 percent of marketing budgets is on content creation so it, it, it think about um other businesses you know um about half almost half of their uh their marketing budget isn't just on these cool on all the cool bells and whistles that you of course need to maintain an online presence but it's just getting the thing made getting that videographer getting that photographer like i talked about 73 percent i'm into skimming blog posts okay so they're at least going to you know read through it they're going to see the content that you create whether or not that they pay attention to every single word you putting relevant stuff out there on a consistent regular basis as well as going through and eliminating the out, outdated material um, impacts well 73 percent of people that um, are researching a business are going to see it 27 percent of them uh, view it thoroughly all right tactic two we'll try to i'll try to move along here establish your online service area with google business profile easy it is free and available to you right now and the impact is massive i would i if if all the rest of them should be high but if there's one that's just going to be uh massive it's 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 this one of course it doesn't exist in a vacuum it can't you can't just have a google business profile and be done with it i'm not saying that um i'm just saying that it is your first step okay so what about a Google business profile do we really need to look at? I said this earlier, look at this middle one, add up to 20 zip codes, cities, towns, or states. This is where you build your service area. There are other ways to do it. There's things like local schema. Um, you know, you can um, ask, you can call one of our sales rep, uh, uh, one of our subject matter expert, experts and uh, ask them about uh, that. You can ask them about GeoJuice and tons of um, other aspects that can be applied. But if you right now, if you haven't done this, you can go into your Google business profile and add up to 20 zip code cities and towns to build your service area. Okay, 56. Uh, now, um, jumping ahead of myself, uh, make sure that when you do this, you do not overlap that service area, but you build a wide coverage as uh, build as wide a coverage as you can. So make sure that you aren't building, you know, a map with service areas that are uh, uh, going over onto each other and overlapping. You want to make sure that you build as much of a service area as you can, because most importantly, as we see there over to the right at the bottom, 82% of consumers use near me or local search with their smartphone before deciding on a business what did we say earlier people are out and about the hours of operation during the day they're running their errands we have extremely busy lives every single ass one of us it's it's a crazy world out there you're pulling out your what are you doing when you're finding a business most likely you're either going to talk into siri or you're going to or or google depending on you know, android or, or ios most likely you're going to pull up your phone you're going to pull up google maps you're going to type in blah 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 fill in the blank near me that's what you're going to do 82 percent of everybody does that the only way that that's going to work and your business is going to show up is if you have your google business profile and your service area properly configured okay it is uh getting search engines to recognize your entire service area online is one of the top challenges local service area business face ability to define your online service area on google to increase local visibility why do we tell people it's the most important thing they should do right away because of this staggering bit of uh, statistics right here at the top 56 percent of local businesses have not claimed their google business profile it's free for you to claim so that's why 
many of you probably should already have one, but if you're wondering why we keep harping on it, think about that. Just the mere fact that you have it claimed gives you a leg up on a good chunk of the competition in your area. Create Google Posts. It's easy, has moderate impact. You have a Google business profile, simply put, feed it. Like I said, you have that great blog post, you have that great video, you're putting on Facebook, you're putting on Instagram, whatever social platform you feel that your community is most plugged into. Uh, you also just remember that you can take it and you can post it on your Google business profile. It is also a business listing and a social profile. It is your your Google, it's, it's, it's kind of everything. So you can gain more control of what searches see about your business on Google, help your profile on Google stand out with eye-catching posts. Images are extremely important on your Google business profile. Uh, I know from personal experience, when I'm looking up a business on Google, I'm flipping through the pictures. I wanna see what the inside looks like. I wanna see what their work looks like. I wanna see examples of what to expect. Uh, maybe even one of those fancy 3D views where I can go in the shop and turn around and look around. Of course, if you did something like that, it would pay to have a uh, um, it would pay to have a professional come in and help you with it, like I mentioned earlier. But uh, make sure that you are feeding that Google Business profile. Uh, there is also uh, you share your offers, updates, photos, testimonials, etc. That thing that you're you're emailing it to your email list, you're sending it to your Facebook post, your Facebook community. Uh, etc. Just make sure that you also include your Google business profile. 40% of local businesses have never created a Google post. So that just includes the people that even claim their profile. They forget to post to it. And 17% of local businesses post once a week. Imagine if you're the one staying, staying regular on top of that. Now that is a big leg up on the competition. Four, going to try to pick it up here, I promise. Post questions and answers to your Google business profile. Another point about Google Business Profile, 90% of people say, oh, well, this is just, uh, these statistics are about user-generated content in general. But uh, just remember that with your Google Business Profile, um, that is another part of staying relevant and, and having that communication and that connection with your audience, with your, prospect, with your prospects, and with your community. Uh, one great way to ex expedite the process and stay convenient to everyone that's looking for your business you get faqs frequently asked questions and answers put them on your google business profile that is user generated content and it has a big impact on your profile and your online presence going to five so this is easy uh with a massive impact and i've talked about it before upload your photos and videos of google business profile uh make this stuff like I said, don't forget to post your Google business profile, but especially any of your visual assets. I already talked about the importance of photos so much. Post photos from your office and projects. We've talked about this, but this let's just uh, you know drill this in. Showcase your team and company culture. Create customer video testimonials. Increase visibility in visual search results. Anything more than three weeks is considered no longer recent. That's right. Stay recency, remember, we not we didn't just, if I could take the big star next to relevancy and the visual pillars, I'd put even uh, like a secondary one on recency if I were. So this is all about how often you're posting, let people know you're still around, is, is by staying re recent and remember that three weeks, so a uh, little under a month is old. Let's think about that. 35% more clicks to your website by uploading photos and videos to Google Business. 62% of uh, millennials, I don't think that's an age thing. I find that a little insulting. I think most of us, most human beings, uh, are visual, uh, respond to visual cues more than anything else. I think your, your interactive content, your photos and your videos, it's more personal. It's reaching out, you're showing people what they can really expect, you're, you're conveying a sense of your personality, your brand, your identity, and your core values. It's all coming across genuinely 
in those photos and videos. It just simply is more impactful. When you want to get into the details and you want to get specific and you want to tell people the facts, then yeah, you want to sit down and write a nice blog. It absolutely has its point of view, but I just think the visual content is more impactful and I think that's a bit of one of those no-brainers. 72% of consumers search for visual content before making a purchase. It's just people in general. It's more important. Um, a more online reviews, another one we've already talked about, told you that there were uh, webinars all about online reviews. We've talked a lot about this. Um, easy and powerful way to maintain your recency online. All right, so it's all about when you're asking your customers to leave reviews, it, it, it's all about staying genuine. You're not asking for a five star, you're asking for feedback. Okay, remember that. Uh, and remember that when you get your one star, it's how you respond to it. People, people are going, to, what's more impactful isn't the fact that you have a perfect score. No one should really, depending on the size of your business and what you do, you're not gonna have a perfect score. That's insane. Um, with the more business you do, you're going to have unhappy people. What people respond to the most is how you address those unhappy people. How are you addressing those one stars in your community, those two stars? What are you saying? Um, but the, uh, and, and how are you responding to them? And are, and are you being genuine? And does that come across and people can see that? And are you taking that feedback to heart? Are you taking that back to your business and helping it to improve uh, who you are and making your business better. And when you make your business better, what do you get? Well, you get five stars. And you, But make sure that you are maintaining this and you are getting consistent new reviews and you are addressing those new reviews right away. Generally speaking, if you get a new review for local small businesses in particular, you have about 24 hours to respond to a review, good or bad. Not the next business day. 24 hours. And that's easier said than done. Of course, we all have extremely busy lives and it can be hard to do, but you, you know, keep that in, in, you know, it's not a hard stop rule, but it will have a massive impact if you remember that in the back of your head. Google filters local search results for best to display only four star and higher results. Remember that 94% of people have said an online review has convinced them to avoid a business. Um, I would even think about that as convince them to avoid or do business with a with a company, depending, you know, if they see a critique and somebody was upset, you know, how did you respond to them being upset? Like I mentioned before, five to nine percent increase in revenue and can uh, a five to nine percent increase in revenue can be attributed to a plus one star increase in rating. So it has real, real world value at the end of the day. All right, moving on, task seven, we're halfway through the tactics. Uh, regularly update your website, difficulty high, impact high, difficulty high, especially with trying to find the time to create impactful content, put it together and distribute it. Uh, the technical aspects of it are kind of the easy part, getting the thing together um, you know, and getting new content and constantly feeding the beast, if you will, yeah, I think is why we mark it as so difficult. Regularly update your website. Okay, so you have, you know, like we said, we want to publish everything to all our areas, but we want to make sure that we first start with the site. You're publishing new blogs. You create location-based content, content around your area. Uh, continuously checked and optimized according to Google Search and Console Insights. So Google is constantly indexing your site. Remember that 46% of people extract Expect a website to load in two seconds. So not only do you need to add new content, your ops, your website needs to be uh, uh, optimized efficiently because we are impatient. And if it doesn't, if we can't get it in less than two seconds, we are going to be moving on. We as in people, uh, make sure that you uh, have a secured website. You don't get the unsecured uh, little tab next in your browser when you go to your website. Like, make sure that you have the uh, everything is up to date with all the appropriate plugins and uh, updates, et cetera, and that you uh, have HTTP uh, connected on all of your sites. Excuse me, I went too far. 29% increase in conversions by featuring user-generated content. So you can get more conversions with the more genuine content that you are putting out there into the world on your site. 
Then tactic eight, regularly update your business listings. We have, uh, I have hammered in the importance of Google business profiles, but it's not the only one. Difficulty is high, again, as in uh, making sure that you, like we said before, you stay consistent and you stay up to date and you stay uh, not just in formatting, but in terms of information and everything is the same across all your different business listings add a new feature message once a month. So it's not just, you know, maintain your Google business profile wherever you decide to list your business. Um, Google business profile being sort of a must and then the the rest of them well. And if you wanna show up on voice search, you need to have Yelp. You really need to have all your bases covered to be honest, but make sure that you are updating everything regularly. So you add new photos to one, you're adding new photos to all. You're adding, you're promoting new offers online through your it's not it's not just put it on your facebook like i said it goes to your google business it goes to all your business listings so stay consistent and updated when you have updates not just consistent on your information but consistent and you have new updates share them on everything make seasonal changes to your information like hours of operation do it for everything 73 percent of customer engagement happens off your website okay so it's on the business listing 80% of customers lose trust in local businesses if they see incorrect or inconsistent information. Okay, they're, you, you think people only look at one and not the other? Well, you're wrong because the second they find that maybe you're slipping in one area, what does that say about you and your business? That doesn't say it, it, it's not professional. 68% of uh, consumers would not use a local business if they found incorrect information in listings. Consistent and up to eight on everything staying relevant and staying recent. Maintain an active social media presence. Uh, moderate and impact is mon This is your conversation. This is the genuine conversation. So outside of staying, uh, staying relevant and consistent and updated and, and recent on all your content and all your different platforms, uh, social media, I think this, this slide in particular, we're talking about the maintaining the conversation. Uh, so the back and forth, you are sharing personal stories about your business, yourself, and your team to differentiate yourself from the competition, engage in conversations, and respond to all comments. Talk to people. Uh, it's not just the uh, the reviews. Um, it's the chatter on your Facebook, the comments, what people, questions people are asking, the comments on your, your, your pictures, etc., uh, it is a massive undertaking, especially if you don't have any sort of automated platform in place to let you know and to notify you when people are commenting on this and that, or if you're getting 18 different notifications from Facebook and Google and Yelp, and you're having to go to, into each one separately, and you don't have an all-in-one platform where you can take all this stuff from one location and be able to address it, it can, it can be very hectic and, and, and very time-consuming but social, make sure you maintain all your social media presence because it is so very important. Um, it, this is where you keep, like I said, your genuine conversation with your prospects and your community. Improved traffic, lead generation, and growing customer loyalty are among the top reasons why small businesses see value in social media. 96% of Facebook users across the platform are on mobile. Just a lot of good facts to take in here engage in conversations and respond to all coming yeah. so we went over that this is this is where social media is where you can really um stay connected and genuine with your community and prospects build an email list something that's very near and dear to my heart we had a great webinar just on email uh this is don't think of it just as a marketing list your email list is really your customer database with their email address being their unique identifier right next to their name maybe their billing address the type of things they buy how much they spend etc this is where you really build your database uh this it, this you can be seen as the backbone of a lot of your marketing uh, i'm realized that we're i'm going to be cognizant of time and help you guys out i've run a little bit long so i will kind of speed through this, but they I could really go all day on just email itself. Um, I think it's it's very important. Uh, for about 20 some odd years now, they've told you that email is gonna go away and it won't. It really is kind of the backbone of everyone's digital marketing presence. And a lot of times I know we all have different, maybe we all, I have multiple emails for different things. It's, it's uh, whether it be signing up for, uh, trials or newsletters, you're staying up to date with local business and then you have one maybe more for your uh, 
uh, your your financial stuff, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but what can you do with the email list and how can it help you with your marketing? So it's not just about plugging in your customers and setting them notifications of appointment reminders, of scheduling, of invoicing, et cetera, et cetera. That's the type of stuff you generally do with email. You send them, you know, you know, here's your receipt. Uh, you know, this is also where you elicit reviews and it can be a massive marketing index if you have it appropriately put together in a nice system that's automated and then you can begin to drill down into that, engage, nurture leads with targeted email campaigns, send automated responses to new leads for immediate follow-up, nurture leads to become lifelong customers with automated campaigns. You can address every single part of the customer journey through email. Think about email. Uh, one thing what I think is most important is 32 times. For every $1 spent in email, email marketing generates $32 in ROI. Why? This is info you should already be keeping. This is your database of your customers. This is your livelihood, your bread and butter. Uh, it's already there to begin with. And just to send them an email with some HTML and some nice, maybe a nice image and a clear call to action, it is a very simple and easy thing to send to them. All it takes is time. You're not paying extra dollars for each individual one and zero you're sending to their iPhone. And if you do get a lead, if you do get a sale from that, the ROI is absolutely massive. 59% of local marketers cite email as their number one source of ROI. Think about how old email is and how long it's been around and how it really is the backbone of just about everything. Stay top on mind by sharing relevant personalized messages. Uh, if Social media, how I like to look at it is social media is how you have a conversation with your community as a whole. Email is how you have a conversation with the individuals and the individual customers. This is your one-on-one. 81% -on -one. Of, businesses, of businesses say that email drives customer acquisition, 80% of retention. Tactic 11, start Google and Microsoft ads. Okay, so high difficulty in terms of uh, when we are talking about ads in general is you can really get into the weeds with these. Um, I highly recommend a company such as ours to help you manage your online ad portfolios uh, because it can be really complicated, but I think the most important thing we wanted you to take away, we're gonna get into ads here, whether it be Google or anything else, is to set aside some cash in your marketing budget to start with your online ads. So let's look at some of the ways online ads are important. Um, you know, we have entire, like I said, we have entire webinars, eBooks, et cetera, just dedicated to your online ads. Um, Google is the most used search engine. We don't need, you know, don't need anybody to tell you that. They kind of rule the, rule the roost. Bing demographics tend to be older and higher income searchers. Just to tell you that Google isn't the only one. There's also Microsoft, there are also others. You can utilize a mixture of exact match, phrase match, and negative keywords. So you can you can tell you can tell Google what words you don't want your ads to show up under. You can tell them the exact words you want to go after, and you can bid on those as well as you can bid on full phrases, full search phrases, optimize landing pages for conversions, uh, highly relevant call to action, no distractions, branding. Um, there are a lot can go into a particular ad that you see on Google and how you entice people to click on that ad. Um, and there are a lot of ins and outs. So I highly recommend not only setting aside a budget to, uh, to have your ads, but a set aside budget to have somebody help you get going and to at least start on ads and bidding and budget and, and how to do this strategically. And so you, um, you aren't pulling your hair out at the end of the day and just throwing money at it. 75 uh, companies like our, like ours, of course, 75% of people say paid ads make it easier to find what they need. We've all clicked on an ad. 74% of small business owners say pay-per-click is a huge driver for their business and that 70% increase in conversions by utilizing remarketing. That What is remarketing? Well, I'll just give you a, uh, a little bit of a definition on remarketing. Uh, remarketing, Google remarketing, is the technology that enables your Google ads to follow potential customers as they move across the internet. So when a user visits uh, a bit of your website, um, a, a cookie is in place, a snippet of code is the remarketing code uh, on your website so that they get at, so basically they, 
get added to a remarketing list and then Google will try to get them later on if they don't convert. Um, a lot of what I just said also applies to Facebook ads. Facebook is massive. Like I said, a lot of you uh, probably are here today because you found us on, on a Facebook ad. Why are we talking about Facebook in particular in terms of their ad placement? A lot of social platforms have ads. Just remember this when we think about Facebook, and it may be seen as old fashioned today. I know that it's pretty popular to think to think of Facebook as uh, as phasing out, but just remember it is still as of March 2023 the largest social media site in the world with nearly 3 billion people using it month monthly. That comes out to about 37% of the world's population, 30%, 37%, almost 40% of everybody on the planet is a Facebook user. That's gigantic. And Facebook ads are massive. Um, Again, more images and videos, less words, a bit of a no-brainer. We've already talked about that. Create custom lookalike audiences. So on Facebook, you have something called a lookalike audience. Um, and why exactly, you know, what is that? What what is a lookalike audience? Um so a lookalike, a lookalike audience is a kind of like the remarketing uh, for the Google ads. A lookalike audience is Facebook is looking at individual profiles of people that have clicked or maybe converted to your ads in the past, and it is pulling similar profiles, similar Facebook profiles um, to those people that have converted off your ads, and it is sending ads to people it thinks it's going to, uh, based off your previous conversions, who they think is going to click. So it's all about just sending ads. Facebook is sending more ads to people that are going to click on your ads uh, because based off of all these people that already have. So it's sending to people that look like uh, members of your audience based on that activity. There is a lot that can go into Facebook ads. You can match ad type to your goals, brand awareness. You So you can, so you can do ads that just improve your brand awareness in your community versus driving traffic to your site, to your, uh, to your landing pages. You can focus on ads that just have to do with lead uh, generation versus uh, more, you know, just getting leads in the door versus getting more people to buy right away, aka conversions. Um, another thing about Facebook is, like I said, with with the other ads, you're setting aside budget to not just do them, but set aside budget to have people help you do them. So make sure you have a strong call to action. 74% of higher income earners are in, of high income. I'm so sorry. 74% of high income earners are on Facebook, 6% decrease in average cost of Facebook ads, 11, uh, an average Facebook user clicks on 11 ads per month of the 3 billion people on the planet. They click on about 11, uh, 3 billion users all over the planet, they click, they click on about 11 ads per month. So keep that in mind, how massive that is much of an impact that can make on your online presence. Optimize website speed for mobile and ser local search. Um, so th this can be high. I'd say that if you have an appropriate, if you're going through an appropriate company such as ours, or you're using any sort of um, website tool like Squarespace or WordPress, it should cover a lot of this stuff if you're not doing too much to the template design. Basically what I want you to take away from here is make sure that you are not just uh, junking up your website with a ton of really high res images or videos um, that you're keeping it pretty, you're adapting your design and keeping it pretty lightweight. You're making sure it's optimized. You're at 15.3 seconds. So that's the average mobile website uh, that it takes, the average time a mobile website takes to load. The first five seconds of a page load time has the highest impact on conversion rates. That is the uh, load above the fold. What's above the fold? Uh, above the fold means it, it is the part of a web page shown before scrolling. So that's when you pull it up on your phone or your device, it's the part of the site that you can see right away. It's the thing that first loads. And it's it's that is the first five seconds of what they're gonna see that's going to entice them to continue on your website. So you wanna make sure that your website is impactful, is, it is, is nice, it is relevant, it is uh, conducive to your brand, 
it is conducive to your personality and who you want to communicate to your company but uh, also very important it pops up right away and it is clean and efficient so a lot of that stuff can be taken care of but if you um, are really are struggling with that it does pay to have someone help you automate your process uh, this is tactic 14 it is high difficulty and has a massive impact because you like I said before already in this in this webinar you have all these different systems you have all these different platforms if you're having to go into each one one at a time piecemeal update all this stuff send out all these posts you know you're already focusing on making content you're already focusing on the good image or the good video or writing your blog post you're focused on taking care of your customers and setting up your promotions etc then when it comes time to make sure that everything is updated and relevant and recent on all your channels and you want to post one thing to everything it all uh, is so much easier if you could do it from all in one place you can do it all from one automated system become more productive and save time improve lead response times and conversions maintain a consistent online presence across all channels reduce your cost per lead discover new insight insights and visualize your roi 50 56 percent of small business owners say it's difficult to implement and roll out new technologies okay so um especially if you're having you know multi, you know one system for your text messaging one system for your email one system to manage your social you're having to go back and forth between two to three it's a massive time sink 76 percent of local marketers see a positive roi within a year by adding automation it has a massive impact on on you your your business your productivity your speed and your speed has a massive impact on how relevant you are and how up to date you can be and how much refresh and cleaning you need to do of your online presence and we are at the end let's just remember what we went over uh when you're going back and looking at this i know there's a lot of details thank you for staying with us i ran a little bit over today appreciate everyone with your patience for coming out uh, so when you are going back over this later on you're looking at the slides and you're looking at your checklist let's just review the three main areas what is your online presence what what makes it up and how do you maintain and what you need to do to maintain it uh, what you need to do to refresh and continue that maintenance with your spree cleaning checklist your five areas that we went over and then you have your long list of 14 strategies you need to implement uh, for the long term uh, to make uh, the uh, refresh part of it and the cleaning um, easier and maybe you could do it more throughout the year so you stay more up to date more relevant and you simply just have a better presence better connection with your community and you ultimately do more business and that is it folks we made it through thank you all for staying with us here today uh, so what I do here is I put a poll on the screen and I'm going to launch that I appreciate you all for coming out. Okay, so that poll on your screen is my invitation to each and every one of you that is with us on today's call, that has stayed with us, uh, a chance to schedule your own session to see how our all-in-one business intelligence marketing software that uses AI learning not found anywhere else can give you complete visibility into your marketing. Transparency of your ROI and make it really simple and easy to build your digital footprint and to grow your business profitably. So we have this poll on screen. Simply just let us know if you're interested in scheduling a one-on-one -on -one call with one of our subject matter experts, and they can take you through all of this and how our platform can help you manage everything we've talked about here today on a one-on-one -on -one session. And if you're watching this later on on demand, you're catching it later on YouTube, et cetera, you can request that one-on-one -on -one with us at any time. Just go to our site, surefirelocal.com and click get a demo. And whether you are new or returning, again, thank you all very much for spending your time with us here today. Really appreciate it. I'm gonna close that poll. All right, and ladies and gents, Thank you so much. That's it. We're at the end. That's another great webinar. I appreciate y'all coming here today. So let's say goodbye. A massive thank you to all of you for taking time out of your busy schedule to spend it with us and for going along with me here today. I really appreciate it. 
lots of good stuff. Again, you will get all slides, you will get the video. Don't worry about it. We're sending that to you later on today by email. If you got any questions, you don't see that, or if you just want to say hi, you can reach out and email us and me anytime. That is marketing at surefirelocal.com. Stop by our website, look at the massive library of free and on demand resources that are all available to you. That's it, folks. We will see you all again very soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.